Okay, hello and welcome to Debbie's Designs. Today I'm going to show you a new product called Brusho Crystal Color. It's really easy to miss in the new catalog because it's up here in the corner on page 26. These come in five containers, five different colors. You've got yellow, orange, red, blue, and green. Hold on a minute while I turn off the volume on my tablet. Okay, now what I've done is these come uh, without this push pin that you see. You are the one that needs to pierce the hole so that these can um, be sprinkled like a salt and pepper shaker. What I've done is I've used these push pins. I got the idea from Susan Brickner on one of our demonstrator pages. So I just pushed down and I actually went around like this a little bit to loosen it up some. And then I used our blends markers, our alcohol markers, and I colored the top of each one so that I knew what color they were because the red and the orange are similar on the labels. So today I'm going to be showing you quite a few things you can do with the brusho. So let me just get situated. I can still hear the volume on my tablet, so let me just take care of that. Okay, the first one, I'm going to show you how to do this splattered background real easy and quick. That's what I did on this card. As you can see, I got some blue. So I'm going to bring in a piece of Whisper White. And all I want is a little bit of the dot, so I'm just going to sprinkle just a little bit like that. Bring in uh, water with a spritzer. And I'm going to hold it quite high above because I just want to barely wet the paper. And that's all I'm going to do on this one. And then that dries a little bit lighter than what you see here and it creates this wonderful background. So that's step number one, just to create a little splatter effect. Number two, I'm going to show you what I did in this card. This actually has two steps. I'm going to be doing the background. And this is created by wetting the paper first. I'm going to sprinkle this quite liberally. I made another card using that and I used the yellow and the orange in the background. This time I'm going to use green. Okay, I've already wet my paper. And as you can see, it's starting to spread. And you can keep wetting until you achieve the background that you like. So in this one I had put my color pretty much in the center and it kind of went this way when it splattered. So this is wetting first and then sprinkling to achieve the background. And then you just let this dry and do what you need to do for your card. So these are the two cards I use um, doing the wet first. So that's number two. And flip this over. Number three, we're going to do the opposite. We're going, oh, and I forgot to show you the stamp set that I used for this card was the lemon zest. I used the live it with zest, and then I used um, the tangerine, and then I cut one in half to create some slices, and then I used the leaf punch with some vellum and early espresso, uh, espresso card stock. For the next card, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to do dry first. And that's what I did with this card and this card. So I sprinkled the brush out first and then sprinkled the paper. And then I'm also going to show you how to paint with it. So this time let's use orange. And I'm going to throw in some yellow. So I'm pretty much filling in 
little sprinkles all over. And I'm going to add a lot of water this time to try to fill it all in. Okay, isn't that pretty? I hope you guys can see that. I had a hard time with my last video where my bright, uh, the spotlights were too bright. I'm just checking my tablet here. Yes, that shows up very nicely. Okay, so this does curl when you get it wet, but it will uncurl all by itself as it dries. So let me put this aside. And then what I did on both of these cards, after I did my background, I also colored with the brush show. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I have a bird here that's stamped ahead of time. And I show you two that I've already done. It gives it a really nice watercolor effect. And this is just a bunch of squigglies that I did just to show you. So I'm going to bring in an aqua painter. And let's color the bird yellow. So I'm just going to sprinkle some on my counter. Take my aqua painter and add a couple dots of water and then just mix that. So I'm making my own painter's palette is what I'm doing. And look how nicely that colors. Okay, now let's start, uh, try another color. I'm just going to do the blue. Again, add a drop of water and mix it. And this is where you can do a background if you want to keep adding water to, to make your own background. So that colors very nicely. So it can be used as powder, wet and dry, and also as a coloring tool. And then just wipe your counter clean. I have little piles going over here so I just have to keep switching. My next one is coloring with emboss. Now I did three different types of cards with the embossing. This one is just um, adding the color with my aqua painter around the embossing. This one, make sure I get this right, this one was wet sprinkling the dry and this one was dry sprinkling with water. So let's do all three. And then I'll show you some other uh, samples that I did with that. I'm sorry my video is backwards. I forgot the setting on that. Okay, so for the first one, let me bring in a scrap piece of paper. That's one thing about this stuff. Make sure you have some scrap paper to work on. Now, we did this one in red, so I'm going to do the green this time. And I'm only sprinkling where you see the embossing. And then I'm going to spray. And then we just let this dry. Now, if you don't like how this is sitting, again, you can take the aqua painter and move some of that around. And then it's going to look like this when it dries. This was really vivid red when it was wet and it dried a little more subtle. So you'll get the same type of effect. It takes too long to dry so you won't be able to see my end results today but I do have the, the finished products to show you. Now on the next one, I did forget to show you, I did pre-emboss these with the flourish. On the next one, I'm going to take the aqua painter and actually wet my paper around the flourish. And I am adding quite a bit of water. And then I'm going to turn around and add the color. And you see how that turns as you sprinkle? I'll try to do it left-handed here so you can see. And then you can actually, again, take this color and spread it more evenly if you want to. And this, again, will dry a lot lighter than what you see here. 
So that one's going to look like this one when you're done. And then I added the black sentiment to it. So that's number two. And the last one with the embossing is where I'm going to create a palette of color. And then I'm just going to trace, let me add a little bit more color. I'm just going to trace around all the squigglies. So what you're doing is outlining the embossed areas. And then once that dries, it'll pull away from the, the white embossing and it'll show up a lot more also. So this is kind of one of those relaxing kind of kind of deals. I think it is anyway. Sometimes I think it's relaxing, but to others it's not. It's stressful. Okay, and that's what that looks like. And the finished one that I have in red is this one. And again, I added the same sentiment and some black rhinestone jewels. So all three cards are actually set up the same way with the same sentiment and the, the jewels. They just have three different looks to them. So that's Emboss Resist. The next one, let me clean up my mess here. Oh, and I'm supposed to, to do something a little funny today. I've, I was having a conversation with some demonstrators telling them that I'm really new to Facebook Live videos. And because I'm French, sometimes my words don't flow like I want them to. So for Carolyn, Elaine, and Linda, they suggested that maybe I show you a French word in each video. So I'm using water in all of my um, creations today. So the word I'm going to show you is O, oh, which means water in French. So there's your lesson for today. Thanks to Caroline, uh, Elaine, and Linda. For my next card, these were some trees that I stamped from the sheltering tree. And then I added the friendship is a sheltering tree at the bottom as a sentiment. I've gone ahead and pre-stamped my trees. And because I made these ones green, let's go with yellow and orange on these. So there's the yellow. And all I'm doing is sprinkling within the tree image. And I'm carefully going to just spritz a little bit at a time. I'm kind of controlling it. And that colors my trees instantly. Isn't that neat? And in with this stamp set, there was a little, um, little dots here. I used that image to fill in just a few more to add leaves um, to the tree. So you can see how both of these differ, but they're both beautiful. And it's just a quick way to color an image. I thought that was pretty neat. I actually found this one on Pinterest. Okay, moving on. I have a little um, cheat sheet here that I'm using so I don't get lost. My next sample is going to be using texture paste. I really like how this card turned out. What I've done is I've used the texture paste. It's already dry. For those of you that have never used texture paste, it comes in this container. And I always keep this on to, so it doesn't dry out. It's very soft and you just use a stencil and spread it with a palette knife. It's actually really thin when it goes on, but it creates a really dramatic effect. And then what I also did is I stamped a butterfly from Watercolor Wings. It's got three different colors on it. I cut it out with the butterfly dies. And I used the flourish dies for this little flourish in the background. I'm not going to be doing that today because it takes too long to dry. But I am going to show you how to color the embossing paste. Let's use blue this time. 
So what I did is I sprinkled first over the embossing paste and then I slowly added the water and you'll see as I add more water the bricks start to fill in. Now that's a lot of water. It's up to you if you want to let it dry this way or you can bring in a tissue. I'm going to double it up and actually put that down to absorb some of it. And then let this dry. Isn't that neat? So we have the blue and then the difference with um, the orange and yellow. I had actually used two colors on this one, but I really like how this turns out. Moving on for my next set, let me get a new paper. Make sure you have a wet towel next to you when you're working with Brusho. Going to bring in another sheet. And what I did with my, I, I cut my sheets in half just so I'd have enough to play with. Now, all of the samples I've shown you so far are using just Whisper White um, paper. I'm going to use watercolor this time and I'll tell you why. I'm creating a rainbow effect. I did it on all three. I did it on Whisper White, which is okay. This one is with glossy paper and it really, the color really didn't stick that well to it. So I really don't care to use the glossy paper again. And then this is the watercolor paper. What a big difference. Okay, so we're gonna create a rainbow. And I'm gonna work this way at the top of my sheet. Oops, wait a minute, I wanted the red. I wanna use the red first, try to stick with the rainbow colors. Then we go to orange. yellow, green, and it's funny the green has little brown specks in it which is kind of neat, and then the blue. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to tilt this just a little bit and then start adding the water and you're going to see what happens. It's going to start running down my paper. I'm just going to keep adding water. And that's how you create the rainbow effect. It just all goes down and kind of melds together to create different colors. And then this was the end result once it's dry. So that's pretty neat. Now we have to be careful to move this one. There's a lot of liquid. And I've got two more to show you. The next one I call uh, wet and press. Maybe you can come up with a more clever name. This is what I came up with when I did this technique. So this would be more of a technique. And because we used blue and yellow, let's use green. And let's do a Christmas color, green and red. I'm going to wet this and I'm using this on a silicone mat. I'm just gonna wet it really good. And then I'm going to press this down and drag it. And then I'm gonna do it again on this corner. So you can keep doing this until your page is full. And I know this is going to be pretty when it dries. And again, this was the yellow and uh, yellow and blue, which of course when mixed makes some of the green color in there. Isn't that neat? Okay, let me get rid of this. Wipe my hands. And lastly, 
I have directional spraying. Let's see, let's use um, blue, blue and green. Now directional spraying means that I'm going to direct where I want my sprays to go. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of blue and some green. And again, I'm going on the edge. And I'm going to spray this way from the, where I laid down the brush -o to across. See what happens? It pushes it that way. And that's all I'm going to do on this one. Isn't that neat? I like the way that it's all clumped on one and then it kind of looks like somebody took a fan and blew it. So that's kind of neat. And this was with the orange and the yellow. So that's all I have for you today. Um, I know you're probably wondering how I deal with the, the paper after it gets all crinkled. What I normally do is I use the adhesive sheets. And I have one all cut out here just to show you how easy those are to use. They just peel. I can get one going here. They stick really good, so try not to get your fingers on it like I just did. I'm just going to use this one. It might not be the right size. And then you just lay this down. And you use your bone folder to burnish. So the whole cardstock layer is going to have adhesive on it. And then you just peel this off and glue it on your cardstock and it's going to be nice and flat. And those are the adhesive sheets. So that's it for today for my live video. I hope you enjoyed all my techniques. This video will be posted so you can re-watch it and take more notes if you want to. And I'm also going to load it on YouTube later today. Thanks for stopping by. Happy New Year and have a good day.